Good morning, everyone. I um, welcome to the second half of this Una After Rome poster. On the first half, uh, I couldn't record with any sound, um, just because stuff was going on here in the studio. Um, but uh, yeah, here's the second part. So this was originally from a sketch that I did. Uh, let me go grab it. A couple years ago, and I just discovered it recently looking through some files. This little guy, and I had notes down here, um, kind of about the concept. And uh, yeah, I really like this piece. It was just done on this 9x12 paper. And I liked it enough, I wanted to make a poster out of it for the After Realm. So I blew it up, I added a little bit and filled out some parts that were missing. I added a map here. Fun thing about the map, um, nobody will recognize this really, but this in particular is from Time Bandits, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, and their whole map thing might have subconsciously influenced some of um, what was going on here in the After Realm. Um, this is her family crest, which um, I haven't really wrote into the story yet, so this is kind of the first appearance of it, other than some promotional images. Um, so yeah, yesterday I, I took on the inking of the, the figure and some of the foreground stuff, um, having a lot of fun with this new pen that I got. Uh, it's a little fountain pen. Uh, called uh, Tachikawa, or made by Tachikawa. Um, it says four manga. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know what the quality is of it, but I know that it works really well. And I get the smallest, thinnest lines out of this uh, with a little bit of, um, what do you call it, uh, variation. Um, so I like it a lot. It's really cheap, too. Um, been mostly inking. Both of these are the... Um, I'm forgetting the name of my own brush. The uh, Kurataki brushes. <laughs> um, also, what I liked about this was that there's a re a refillable thing in here. So I, I took time to use a syringe to take the ink out and put my own ink in because it wasn't waterproof. Same with these. You can replace the ink in there with your own. Um, I've also been enjoying using the... Uh, Fudakochi, Fudakochi, Gikochi pen. Um, I should be able to pronounce that. It's not that difficult, but it's kind of early still, as you can tell. I can't think fully straight yet. Co coffee over here is going to help. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and ink the rest of this, and I'll, I'll do my best to tell you what my thought process is. Um, his eyes for Puka the goat, um, these are really symbolic. I mean, these are hardly literally what goat eyes look like, um, but I like this kind of stylized thing. It's also slightly lopsided, so I'm going to, which didn't really matter at all in that original sketch, right? But I'm going to just draw that for myself to kind of make it a little more symmetrical. I think that's all I gotta do. It's pretty sloppy, but it gives me an idea of where it needs to be. Um, there's other details I'm gonna work later on in this. If you look at the way that the line comes down here, um, it's curving correctly with the, the shape of the shoulder pad, but it gets thin down here and too thick here. It just looks weird and two-dimensional. Sometimes it's hard to explain why. So this isn't quite working and this isn't quite working. So I'm gonna to have to do something to try and accentuate these shapes better. Um, it's hard for me to, to verbalize why it doesn't quite look right. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's just a, a, a micro shape within the, um, the brush stroke that um, can change everything, you know. Um, I think the feet is another good example um, this one's pretty strong. The curve is coming down here, and then it goes right into the sole of the shoe and kind of really illustrates and it explains visually exactly what this form and shape is. It's less successful here because 
I have the line just kind of ignoring the sole of the foot and it's just kind of continuing to come here, whereas this one comes down and, and in more. Um, let's see if this helps if I... That helps some, but still this area gives it away but because of the thickness of it and, and there's just something weird here. So I'll probably just put in some... There's a great old saying, uh, I think it's attributed to Wally Wood, which is, when in doubt, black it out. Um, I don't really know if he said that or not. It's just one of those things, but it's useful. I'm gonna have to add a lot of details to these like bricks and, and broken stones and stuff to make it look more real, but that makes me feel better than it did before. I'm also gonna be filling in more black area in here and stuff. But let's have fun, let's get right to Puka. I like this kind of bold, thick line that I have here, so I'm gonna try and keep that. Pardon me. I think I wanna get a uh, another glove that actually covers my middle finger, because I've noticed when I'm inking, my fingernail here will sometimes drag on the paper. And that's the whole purpose of wearing the gloves. It helps keep things smoother. and. This is really nasty. I'm sorry you're looking so closely at my fingers, uh, but you know, I get cuticles and like caught skin and stuff like that, especially with the hand washing going on now. They're just constantly dry no matter what I put on them. Um, so long story short, I, I think I want to get a glove that, or something that covers this fingertip. Um, so let's do some thick, bold lines here. So one of the things I did here, um, there's a little bit of an angle here. Even though this is a thin, this is a, a, a very smooth brushy line, um, when it changes directions, instead of making it really smooth like this, I could have done like a, which also works, right? That would be the eye. But I really like this little angle here. It just gives it a little bit of, of Attitude is the wrong word? I don't know. When he used to play pool, like shooting billiards and stuff, um, there's a thing called English that you put. It's like a kind of a spin that you put on the ball when you hit it. Um, it gives it extra energy. And that's kind of the best way I could explain why I like a little bit of an angle instead of totally smooth. Sometimes I like the totally smooth. It depends. If this was like younger Una, um, when I'm drawing the, 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 the younger version of her, I'm typically going for softer bouncier, rounder, um, almost Pixar-esque like shapes. Um, and with growing up Una, I'm using more angles and more pen, uh, a little more harshness to it. Let's do these funky goat eyes. I don't know if you hear that weird sound back there. That's my dog, Fry. He sits next to me in his own chair. He's old and cranky and snores all day. And let's go for this other eye. A little, a little too much English there. Ah, shit, and I got too close here. Um, I don't like that this is so close. It, it kind of creates a tangent where these two lines it just kind of sucks your attention to there. Um, I will fix it in Photoshop. So there's little things here that I'm going to touch up in Photoshop. Uh, but it's fine in, in the execution. I'm not going to let it slow me down or don't let mistakes screw you up. Don't let mistakes slow you down or doubt what you're doing. Just got to roll with it, man. In the old days before Photoshop, yeah, I'd have to bust out white out and be really careful about how I go to fix it. And sometimes that was a nightmare. But now we got, you know, Clip Studio, Photoshop, and Procreate, and all these other tools to help us out. I often think about that and then think about guys like Jack Kirby and Alex Toth. All they had was like a number two pencil, <laughs> some rulers, some circle templates, protractor. Basically, that's it. 
<laughs> you know, um, they had their books, you know, they had their references and stuff, but they certainly didn't have um, the sort of world of tools and crutches that we have now. Yeah, it just gives me a, a, such a deep, deep appreciation for their art and for the work, their imaginations, their problem solving. So, Puka's uh, horns, actually one of them is broken. I like the symmetry here, so I gotta think about it. If I wanna leave the goat horns on anyway, or take it off just like in, you know, he is in the, the actual story. I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna leave it there for now. I also like the way his ears kind of disappear into the dark here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. This is a little earring, it's thinner at the top, thicker at the bottom, obviously, for the lighting. I'm gonna leave this little tiny line here as I come around. It sort of helps illustrate the shape and form of his earring. brush is uh, pretty versatile. I like how it can be so thin and so thick as well. I've had the patience and maybe slightly better eyesight. You know, as I've gotten older, um, the small details are harder on my eyes to adjust even with glasses. Um, but if I have more time and all that kind of stuff, uh, I could probably just ink everything with just this one brush. It's just when I got down to the nitty gritty details, I'd really have to slow down and concentrate. Sometimes on these backgrounds, when I do these lines, I like them to be kind of perfect, kind of this effect. Like really sharp and really controlled and crisp. And then other times I like them more like they are here where It's still a little clean, but you know, just something that gives it a little more texture and roughness. And I'm gonna do that here because it feels more natural than, it shouldn't feel like a cold um, fading line. It feels like it should be natural. So we're gonna let the brush do its thing and we're gonna allow the brush to even be a little dry brushy, a little, I don't wanna use the word sloppy, but a little sloppy. <laughs> just let it be, let it relax. I want to keep the distance between the lines pretty consistent. Like you don't want an area where they're too fine together or too thick, you know, um, but they don't need to be mathematically the same. They just need to be in the same ballpark. I'm not looking for perfection here. I wish it was easy to pull the camera off of here and show you Fry. He is so funny. Um, because of the angle that I drew it in, you notice there's a slight curvature coming this way on all the lines. That's because I drew it from here. So um, when I do these extra little lines, I want to do it from the other angle just to add to the imperfection to keep it from being too uniform. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Same thing here. See what I love about this brush is I can just go through 
this whole section here. And every now and then I'll just kind of want to turn the brush around and just sort of spread the ink around the inside because it's being sucked out really fast from one area. Um, but other than that, I mean, I could just keep going. I don't have to stop and dip, dip the brush into the, the paint or the ink, I mean. And, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but that dipping of the brush does eat up time. The same thing with the quill. That's why um, I'm interested in trying these other, these G pens out, the G quills from um, a lot of the manga artists use because I've been watching a lot of the manga videos of artists working. And uh, there's a level of detail in there that I'm impressed with that I don't know that I can get with other things. Um, but uh, I'd like to try my best to keep them in cartridge form and stuff because I don't want to stop and, and dip the pen and then have it to clean it and all that stuff. Um, some people actually enjoy the process of that and I can I could dig that, but I just don't have the time. Partially because I, you know, work on multiple books at once, um, you know, each of which has deadlines and stuff, but also because just, there's just less time in the day anymore, even with this quarantine stuff. I've actually got less time than ever before, to be honest, with the quarantine. Um, some days I've got no energy. I'm just, I guess it's a form of depression. You know, you just get zapped of any will to do anything. That will happen every every few days. Um, before the pandemic, I would have something like that happen to me every month, maybe once a month, something like that. No big deal. It's just your body saying you need to rest, right? But um, it's been happening twice a week at least now <laughs> since this whole thing. Um, we also have to keep the house super, super clean because of Taki's uh, immune system being lowered. So we just do a lot more cleaning now than ever before, just constantly, every day. Cleaning, dusting, disinfecting. Because it's not just the virus that we have to worry about, it's just other things, other like sort of infections that she can get that we have to worry about. In fact, Taki had a little cut in her hand it took forever to heal. And it was just this little nick from cardboard. So seeing how her immune system is weakened really uh, motivates us to keep things super, super clean, but really time consuming. Still not sure about the horns. I think I'm just gonna draw the horns in now and then I can decide later in Photoshop uh, or Clip Studio where I clean it up if I wanna keep it consistent or not. Um, yeah, so just less time to work in a day. And it seems like the, the days just divide it into these 20 minute increments, right? It's like 20 minutes to clean, 20 minutes to meditate, 20 minutes to exercise, 20 minutes to do this and that. So then the idea of adding more time to my day with uh, dipping in ink <laughs> seems nuts. I also like here the brush can get a little rough. I like that it's not super crisp and clean here. You know, not just the dry brush, but kind of the ends are a little bit muddy and stuff, which gives this parchment like a texture. So it's not just the dry brush effect, but actually like what does the tip of the pen brush look like? Which is also one of the reasons why it can be limiting sometimes. It's, it's hard to get a variation. The exact same reason why this was so useful that I could get such a similar brush line out of it also sucks when you're doing, it's the opposite of good. It sucks when you're doing stuff where you want variation out of uh, different texturing lines, you know? You can do it, you just have to be really, really, really thoughtful of what you're doing and how you're laying down the line. textures and stuff in here. I don't want to put too much into her hair. I really like how sort of basic it looks. Yeah, basic. Um, one of my favorite pens 
is these these uniball pens I use a lot of but because they just work fast they're just workhorses um, but uh, I also like these other Japanese pens called Bimoji um, and it's got these little tips on here you get a lot of variation out of these as well Some of them I use for fine details, others I use for like this, like because it's going to be black all around these stars, and I just need a thick border so that when I fill in the black, it'll um, be a little easier than if it was like a thin line. If you guys are still listening, you have any questions, just uh, ask below. Leave a question in the comments and um, I'll answer. So far, um, the YouTube comment section here has been really manageable. It gets harder on some of the other social media platforms. Um, like Instagram, I'm horrible at the messaging there. I don't know why. I just I never think to check, and then when I do want to check, like the old man that I am, I'm like stumbling around trying to figure it out. <laughs> I bet you can hear Fry now. He's starting to get loud. Oh, just like that, he quieted up. He knew I was talking about him. A little star there. All right, let's just do these. I like the way this kind of comes in instead of going out, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Not too strong, just a little bit. Makes it look nice and weird. Generally, the lights come from above, so if I'm going to do anything with his horns here, Uh, the thicker part will be down here on the lower side because the light's coming from above and I don't need to really um, Extend the line all the way to the edge here. So I'm just going to do little hints Of those grooves that you see in goat horns I don't need to get carried away Just a few Now that I look at it, I think I liked it better without. Uh, minor details down here. I'm going to use this little, this new pen. Actually, before I do this, because I might not even record this section. Um, remember I talked about the shoulder pads here? Let's see if we can add some lines here that's going to help describe the shape of the shoulder pad better. So I'm putting like this little edge in. And the shoulder pad helps just describe the shape a little bit better. Eh, 
better than before. I think I would have liked it better if I kept this line closer to the edge instead of kind of lifting it up like that. But I also think I can fix that pretty easily. Oh yeah, I like this. What is that, like a millimeter of difference in shape? And it works better. Still just not really happy with this, it's just wonky. I'll fix it in uh, the Photoshop, but I think that's as far as I can take it now without possibly screwing it up. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take a chance here and add a couple lines under his eyes. I feel like it'll work, but I could be wrong. There you go. I, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, and the last thing to do is just some of these details here. Um, but I think with these, I'm going to really get in there. I'm going to lean really forward in front of the camera and stuff. So I think I'm just going to save it um, and do it after this recording here. Um, I just want to give you guys, I've got more details to work on it, but I um, just want to share this, this the, the most important part of the process was the overall inking and what my thought process was. And, um, and there you go. I will, uh, you'll see a finished version of this um, as the thumbnail and uh, I'll clean it up and see just about what differences they are. And like I said, you can ask me any questions and uh, I think that's it for now. Thanks a lot guys, take care.